Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today's Bob Ross classic painting is Golden Morning Mist. I can't remember the title even. It just goes to show you how many mistakes we can make. And I painted this wrong the first time. So despite what the mug says, I'm human. And if you make mistakes on your paintings, that's all part of the learning process. So you know the routine. Sit back, relax, cup of tea, cold drink, and watch me paint Golden Morning Mist. Happy painting, people. So here's my canvas, 16 inches by 20. And I want to sort of create a bit of a shape on the right. I'm gonna use some black gesso for this. I've put some on a plate and I'll be using this foam brush just to create the pattern. I want to have roughly halfway across my canvas with dark and about a third up from the base. And it sort of wants to be a bit of a curve to it. So I just gently block in the area which I know I want to keep, which is on the left, and the rest be nice and dark. Leave this to dry for at least half an hour. I'll use my special artist watch to set a timer. I'll even push the right button to start it. I'll be using these two Bob Ross one inch brushes. This one's slightly older and this one much newer. This one I'll be using for putting on liquid clear in the black part and the nice brush I'll be using for liquid white in this section. I'll also be using a fan brush and a liner brush and of course a Bob Ross palette knife. So here's my can of Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. I'll be using this to prepare this area so that it's nice and wet and I'll be using Bob Ross liquid clear for the black area. I use it from these little pots for ease of use and storage and I want to apply this extremely thinly. I can't stress that enough. More people have happy accents by putting on too much. I'll leave some instructions here for you. Here's my pot of liquid white and as I mentioned I'm going to use my nice brush for this. Look how little I apply. I've only got to do maybe a quarter of a canvas and that little bit will cover it all quite well. Where the two meet, I let one just bump into the other. I even it out with some long strokes and then use my fingerprints to test my canvas. I made a video all about liquid white and I'll leave a link for you here. Here's my palette and my first big mistake. I started with yellow ochre instead of Indian yellow. I then added a little too much alizarin crimson and then finally a little bit too much dark sienna and well my golden glow was gone i realized my mistake even adding trees didn't help they were the wrong color as well so this is the point i stopped and realized that my golden morning mist was no longer golden it was turning into something from mars the red planet so i started over again don't be afraid to make mistakes and to start over. Just recognize that you're going wrong sooner rather than later. I prepared a fresh canvas and this time I started out with Indian yellow on my old brush. Yes, I even got the wrong brush. I left a small area for a sort of back glow. I wanted that lovely sort of light coming through a forest effect. And this time I extended that Indian yellow out over the edge of the black. Now into a little bit of alizarin crimson and dark sienna mix. I just roughly mixed it on my brush. Again, I blend it in well. And lastly, some Van Dyke Brown on the extreme edges of my painting. I've picked up my nice brush for some yellow ochre. I use my nice brush in the background where I want some lovely soft blends. I'm being a little more cautious this time, not to overdo it. As you can see, I maintain my lovely glow in the center. Now, hold your breath. It's time for that alizarin crimson again. And, yep, it's just too red again. I'll blend it out, but that's not working very well either. Sometimes it's just better to stop, dry clean your brush and wipe off the paint and blend it out again, which is how I saved my painting the second time around. Now for some background foliage. I take a little titanium white, a little bit of the yellow ochre, and just a hint of the dark sienna. But I want to stay distinctly golden for this color. I'm going to load some of this color on the corner of my fan brush. 
This is a strange stroke really, it's more of a sort of scrubbing action. So just give the corner of the fan brush a little bit of a, a tickle on the canvas. I changed my colours a couple of times, building up the strength until it just shows. As I add extra layers of foliage, I let the colour darken slightly. This gives the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. My final colour is a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Now I'm really quite tan coloured, but still not red. Now, with very little paint left on my brush, I just put in the suggestion of a few overlying branches from trees in the background. Keep this very, very soft and indistinct. I just want to sort of cradle that light patch in the background. Now for a few background trees. I've added a couple of drops of thinners to this lovely honey gold mixture. I add a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown and starting from the bottom, I add these little fine saplings. I like to work up from the bottom and then go back up the trunk each time. And as I do, I branch off to the sides left and right. I find it easier to do this as I don't have to try and land on the trunk first time every time. Now let's add a riverbank, just in here. I got the old brush back. The last time I used this, I had some Van Dyke Brown on it. I use a tapping action, just to add a little bit of texture to this dark paint. It'll make it easier for highlighting. Now I need a good strong dark colour for my background foliage on the right hand side. I've taken black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna and a Lizarine Crimson. I want a really good dark chocolatey brown colour for this. There. And once again, I'm going to use my old brush to do some overhanging trees. Notice how one layer overhangs the previous one. I tip my brush slightly on its corner. Not completely over, but just on a corner so that I can get a little bit of this foliage tapped in. I like to map things out a little bit in advance. So I start off with just a few short branches and make sure I've got some nice shapes going on in here. Once I'm happy, I can go back and darken it all up. I could also come back and fine tune things. Down here against the water's edge, I want it to be darker still. Here's that little bit of fine tuning. Now for some highlights. Take special note of how I hold my brush. I want my little Bob Ross logo facing up. I'm gonna pull out my highlight colors. These are soft and oily, and the dark brown paint we just applied is firm and dry, so don't thin it. Make sure it stays firm and dry. Notice how I pull my paint into like a little curtain and I just let my brush slide forwards. If there's not enough paint, pull out a little more. But I'm looking for a little line of paint just ahead of the bristles of my brush. Perfect. This is what your brush should look like. Not completely stuck together, but just a little line of paint right on the edge. Now. Tip the brush slightly on a corner again and gently just offer the brush to the canvas. That sticky dark brown paint will take off the colour it wants and give you back what it doesn't need. Work in layers, adding one branch at a time. Save a little dark here and there. Not every branch needs a highlight. This little group of branches looks a little bit more distant and further back, so I won't touch it. Take advantage of all these happy little accidents. I change my colours as I go, making some a little brighter to catch the rays of light from the background glow. My top tip here is to let your brush run out of paint sometimes. It creates that lovely sort of mysterious background foliage that you can barely see, but it's just there. Also notice that that underpainting colour, the crimson and the brown, start to come through the background foliage too. This gives my painting a lovely rich glow. This last layer has a little touch of sap green. 
And whilst I'm here, let's add a little glow to my riverbank. I'm using a very, very light colour for this. White with just a touch of yellow ochre. But I overdid it slightly. No problem. I just pick up my old brush and just tap in a little bit of shadow again. Now, time to get brave. I've got some more of that white, a little bit of ochre in it, and I want to put in the shimmer of light on the water. Press and pull down firmly. I want this spot to be the brightest, so I'll work away from it to the left and the right. Keep that lovely dark shadow. The overhanging bushes have cast on the surface of the water. I reload my brush, and to do that, I make sure I dry clean it first. And again, I start in the brightest area and work over to the left. Another good dry clean. Make sure you haven't got any paint on there at all. And then gently from the edge to the center, brush across just enough pressure to disturb those downward strokes and give them a slightly watery look. For a waterline, I just tap my knife into some of this honey gold colour. This would be too bright, I think. And that little tiny roll of paint, just press firmly into the canvas. Give it a nice little push and a little rub. I just want to leave the suggestion of light where the land meets the water. I use the small blade of my knife just to add a few dark ripples across those reflections. Let's add some bushes and a riverbank to the other side of the painting. Same process. Corner the brush, add some dark, and then highlight it. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget, you can always reach down and hit the little thumbs up button. That's a like. You can subscribe and leave a comment. And if you want to go one step further, you can even buy me a coffee. I spend all the money on new supplies. Thank you. For the highlights of these bushes, I loaded my brush very carefully, in particular this corner for these bushes. You'll find that you need the light to be a little brighter on this side, so I had a little bit more light colour that side of the brush. For the flat grassy areas of my riverbank, I lay my brush flat, so not on a corner, and I add just a little bit more of that light golden colour with just a hint of sap green. Notice how I leave little shadow lines here and there. Follow the lay of the land. Take frequent breaks from your painting and stand well back, and add a little sparkler here and there. Time for our bravery test. I've scraped out the excess paint in this area for a big tree. This makes it easier to apply this colour. It's Van Dyke brown and a little black. Just touch the edge of the tree and pull to the centre slightly. I want to build up a layer of thick, dark brown black paint. This is a very dry colour, just like all the other dark colours I use. It makes adding highlights easy because they're thin and oily. I take some white, a little touch of yellow ochre, and even a little bit of dark sienna, and I marble mix them. Notice I don't overdo it. If you mix them too much, they turn into a caramel color, which doesn't look particularly interesting. On the right hand side of the trunk is where the light is catching it brightest, and I just touch with the knife. When the painting's dry, It'll look and feel like bark. And my tree will look almost three-dimensional. This has got to be one of the most fun ways of creating a tree. I even add a little bit of mossy green colour to it. Now, time for some branches. I thin down some of that Van Dyke brown and black mixture on my liner brush. I let the tip of my liner brush wiggle and jiggle across the canvas, adding lots of lovely characterful lumps and bumps. 
they're the perfect places to add little side branches. I'll go over them a couple of times and as I stand back and look at them, I make them slightly bigger here and there. So build them up slowly. Just a touch of highlight to cover up the base of the tree trunk. And I think we're almost there. Well, maybe. I stand back and have a good look at my painting and decide that this is a little bit sort of empty over here. So I add a little shadow tree in the background. It's a pale brown colour, but just dropped in and it helps to fill out the side of my painting. The last little step is some very, very pale blue colour, a tiny little bit on the edge of my knife. I like to add this little touch of colour. It's called referred light. You'll often see it as a sort of an afterglow behind a tree. It's only a small detail, but it really helps your trees stand out. So there you have it, golden morning mist with lots of happy accidents. But don't go away, there's another little video coming along full of more happy accidents. Happy painting people, that's like eight happies in a row.